Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Should you use the cloud or just self-host? You've probably run into some memes like this on social media or blog posts that are kind of pushing back against cloud and advocating more for self-hosting. But of course, people's opinions are really built around their own context and what works for them might not work for you. So I'm gonna dissect this pretty popular blog post. The link will be in the description because it has a lot of interesting points that I need to elaborate on and kind of give a little bit more further context which is stop going to the cloud and getting scammed $200 in infrastructure to serve your startup to 100,000 monthly users in 15 minutes. Self-hosted Postgres, Caddy Server, and Docker Compose for the win. Now, the first thing to note is they mentioned a startup. Are you a startup? Are you solo, indie, maybe just a side project? Maybe some of this applies to you. If not, then take with a grain of salt here. So I'm gonna highlight some things in this post and I wanna add some nuance that if you are a startup or if you're not, so this first part is, sure it has its uses at certain scale and so on. The problem is almost no one is at such scale and never will be. But we are blindly following a trend, pretending it's not the reality. I think it's got a point about following a trend, but before I get to that, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. Now there's a couple things here. The first is that we're just blindly following a trend. I agree, but I think it's more than that. I think it's bigger than that. It's our whole industry. It's not just about cloud versus self-hosting. This is the industry as a whole does this continuously. There's a herd heading in a direction and everybody's following it. It may not be going in the right direction, but we do this. There's tons of examples of this. I think spas generally are this way where everybody did it, regardless of what their context is and what they were building. I think things like HTTP APIs and how they're developed now and just how REST turned into what we are doing now with HTTP APIs, that's just kind of following the herd without really kind of really realizing, does it make sense for what I'm building? Now, the other thing about companies or startups not being at the scale and never being at the scale of needing the cloud, if we're talking about scaling like in this sense where you need to scale up and down, that's a very different reason than what a lot of people have about why they want to use the cloud. It's not necessarily about scaling, it's about managed services. What I mean by that is a big portion of this article is dedicated to how you can self-host Postgres Caddy Server using Docker Compose in 15 minutes. So I'm going to go over this really quickly, but I just want to illustrate everything that's happening and you kind of follow along and see if this makes sense to you in your ability or your team's ability to manage this infrastructure manage these services. So you got to install Postgres, uh, your data, set up your database. <clears throat> then we are going to be able to need to connect to our containers. So we're going to have to install Docker because again, this is bare metal. So our containers for our app are running in Docker, but then Postgres is living on the host. So we got this setup to do. Um, we want to be running Docker um, as non-root or rootless. Um, then we're going to enable that our containers can connect to Postgres. I'm going through this fast, but just outlining everything that needs to happen here. And then if you need scale in terms of uh, horizontal scale, you're going to be running multiple instances of your app. That's going to have to be behind a load balancer. So what we're going to set up there is we're going to use Docker Compose. So we're going to have multiple instances running. Then we need to set up Caddy Server to do our load balancing. So there's all that that needs to be managed and configured. Keep going. And then of course, backups. Um, that's something with our database that we're gonna wanna manage as well. So here's all the instructions and this can get you done in 15 minutes. But of course it's not just 15 minutes because that was just the setup. You actually have to maintain all this and manage it and fine tune it as you go. That's why depending on what your skill set is or how you wanna spend your time, it's more not necessarily about scale, that's an aspect of it, but a lot of this for some people is managed services. I don't wanna manage it. The cloud, you're managing it, and I'm gonna pay for it. As a personal tidbit, many years ago, I was responsible for managing a system that used MySQL and had two primary nodes. Each one of those primary nodes also had many different read replicas. Managing that is not trivial, not trivial at all, especially at the size of what they were, as well as dealing with backups, migrations, et cetera. Not trivial. In comparison to using something like AWS RDS for MySQL in this example, so what I'm comparing it to, it is a blessing. I'm willing to pay for it for certain aspects. 
for the replication, the failover, multi-region, multi-AZ. I understand what how each is managing or not. And again, depending on your context, maybe in some cases, yes, it's absolutely beneficial to do it yourself. And then in others, when I see the value, I can see the value because I had to manage it myself. So jumping back over to the article, AWS marketers have done a good job in making you think installing a Rangan database was hard and complex task. In some cases, it is indeed. It is indeed. But for the average IT Joe startup, I wouldn't think so. So I think that's a fair statement for me, knowing what I know, my skill set in a startup, then yes, me host self-hosting, depending on what the requirements were, could be totally fine. Your startup, your skill set, your requirements, totally different conversation. But of course there's more. You might need to add monitoring, observability, alerts. Ain't that hard to be honest. I try to avoid the words easy and hard because they're pretty subjective based on a lot of things, context, skill, experience, and they often get confused with simple and complex. So should you self-host because the cloud is really just a big marketing scheme and it's too pricey, etc.? Maybe. I don't really think this article was necessarily bad per se. In that person's context, it probably 100% makes sense to them in the startups and things that they've worked in. In very other startups, it could be completely different. If you don't have the skill set, maybe you want to use the cloud and manage services because you believe your time is spent better spent elsewhere. Maybe you've done some pricing cost analysis to realize, okay, we're going to use and say AWS to deploy. We're going to use Elastic Beanstalk. And maybe we can just deploy to some uh, T3 micro and then for EC2 and what we're using in RDS and what are S3 costs, and you just do some cost analysis to figure out what it actually is. Maybe you do really need some more complicated infrastructure that's managed for you because it is gonna be time consuming and you don't wanna deal with it and you're willing to pay for it. Maybe you do have the skill set, the manpower, and your time is better spent there. It really depends. I don't think this is startup, non-startup. It really depends on skill sets, experience, use cases, requirements. Easier said than done, that seems obvious, but it all the time things lack context and really just focus on what you need and what serves you best. So get in the comments, are you self-hosting and love it? Are you using the cloud and hate it or vice versa? Get in the comments and let me know what you're using, what your experience is, and kind of have you shifted from one way to the other. And if you want to talk to other developers and you got questions about infrastructure, how you're deploying, etc., you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. Check the link in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.